Let's take a few minutes here and break apart this indexing valve, talk about some of the issues that you're going to face, and we're going to just touch really briefly on some of the troubleshooting scenarios that you're commonly going to find in the field. I'm not going to give you every step in that. If you haven't already done so, please download the class materials and it'll have a step-by-step -step on there, which may not include every single wild thing that you ever may encounter, but it's a, it's a good framework of how to think and how to approach this with a couple of special situations to watch out for. So uh, I'm not going to bore you by taking the screws out of this. I just want to point out that if you're using a powered device to take the screws out, what I do is I run them back in about 75% of the way with my device and then get out of just an old school screwdriver and take it all the way back in. These cases are made out of ABS plastic and if you're commonly using powered devices, this battery uh, powered screwdriver isn't so powerful that it's really going to crack this, but if you practice you know, closing up valves and plastic components with, with powered tools, you're, you're eventually going to crack these things open like it just happens. So I just try to get it close and then use my screwdriver to finish it up. And when we put this back together, I'm going to take it apart, but as we put this back together, you'll find that it only goes back together one way. It's kind of dummy proof. The cam, the top piece here, it has a little pin and a little notch that fit together. So once you get it on there, you just spin it around and it only fits in one place. And then the top of the valve, there's two holes that are right beside each other in one position and that's the only way that it'll go back on there. So you really don't have to worry. It kind of, like I said, it, it, it dummy proofs it. Um, so when you're taking this thing apart, if it's been there for a while, more than likely these parts are kind of seized together. We're going to see two different O-rings in here, but just be careful if you're using a flat bladed screwdriver to pry these pieces open or a, a knife Make sure that you don't damage the O-rings underneath there, but a lot of times it's necessary to get a knife right under this lip and kind of pry that until it pops off because the O-ring gets compressed and it gets stuck down on there. So this O-ring goes all the way up inside, you know, just the corner of this. There's a little gap here, but that's not actually where the O-ring goes. It goes up against here because when you look at the top, you see that uh, there's a little lip right in the very top of that entrance that this o-ring fits up against so that's one of those areas when you're breaking this thing down that you'll want to you know kind of try to make sure that there's no grit or scale or sand or anything down in that when you put it back together so as we go through here <clears throat> and we uh, talk about these troubleshooting scenarios there's a couple of things that you need to do every single time you've got a problem with this step one in any scenario is check your pressure and flow. Hopefully on the pressure side of this, as you've got water coming into the valve, somewhere you have a hose bib or a threaded fitting that you can put a pressure gauge on or put a faucet that you could put a pressure gauge or a combination gauge which would show you your pressure and flow. But if you don't have a combination gauge, you can just use a standard pressure gauge which is really cheap to get it at a hardware store or whatever. And then you could run a five gallon bucket test to check your flow because a lot of problems with this come from flow that is either too low or too high or pressure that is too low or too high. So step one in every scenario is to check those two things. Step two is to take this cam off and then turn your water on for a second or a couple of seconds and flush this valve out while you're kind of pushing down on this piece and allowing everything that you can to you know, gurgle up out of here and then shut it off put it back together, check it again, because sometimes, you know, it's, it's not a panacea. I mean, it won't fix everything, but there's a whole lot of issues that are just happening because there's some sand or grit that's stuck between a piece or two down in here and just needs a little bit of flushing. But a lot of times you're going to have to take it apart. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get our knife here and get up underneath this edge. The O-ring, you don't have to worry about it so much on the top here because the O-ring is further down in here. It's not right there at the lip, but the O-ring kind of fits right there. And of course, that's one of the areas that you want to clean up is right there. And also inside the case, there is a lip right here that this O-ring fits on. So clean that out, flush it, wash it out with some clean water. But there's also another lip down inside of here, and this is even more important 
because it's not just prevents water from leaking out of the case. If this lip down in here has corrosion, scale, sand down on it, it's going to keep this disc from seating down properly. So if you want to clean that thing out there, you know, get down in there and try to make sure that everything's out of it. But there's also a little post right here that you can't, you surely you can't see in the video, but it's like a little two inch post here. And sometimes that post can get some scale and build up on it. So that's the something also you want to try to make sure that it's clean, flush it out. And then your stem, which is this white piece here, and this is the disc. The stem has a spring down inside the middle, and you want to set that on that post and make sure that it, the spring is, is strong and it's bouncing back and forth on there. Okay, so let's talk about some of the issues that's going to happen, you know, when you're out in the field and you're looking at these. You may have low pressure in a zone or in the entire system. If you have low pressure in the entire system, you want to check one of the supply parameters, maybe a, a gate valve is partially closed, maybe the pump isn't operating correctly. So if you're in an area to where you have a lot of pump combinations with these, you better get good at troubleshooting pumps. They're, they're not terribly complex, but they can add another layer of complexity to this that you should be prepared to look into. Um, on pumps, I like to mount a pressure gauge on the pressure side, you know, between the the pump itself and this, I like to put a pressure gauge on that side, but on the suction side, you should put a threaded fitting that you can put a vacuum gauge on. I generally don't leave a vacuum gauge on all the time, but I like to put a threaded fitting on there to put a vacuum gauge on it for troubleshooting purposes. Because, you know, these, if you don't have steady flow to them, it can cause some, you know, some problems, especially with the skipping zones, right? We have the problem of it skipping zones, and sometimes if your pump is losing prime, right, this valve actuates, it advances by the shutting off and on of the water. So if your pump is losing prime, effectively the water is stopping and starting back up sometimes several times in a row as the pump cycles. And that can cause this valve to cycle, which is meaning it's just moving from zone to zone really quickly. You think it's skipping zones, but it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's just the pump that's giving it a problem. And if you have a solenoid valve between there, uh, if you're on a city water system, if you have a solenoid valve that's used to actuate this, then always check your solenoid valve first. It may be the cause of some problems. Now, let's talk about the difficulty switching zones. Now, that may be from flow rates that are too low or too high. And on this stem here, you have a selection. It comes with a, a standard flow, but you can also have a heavy or a light flow. I think the standard flow runs from 10 gallons per minute up to, I think the upper limit of this device is 50 gallons per minute, but then I never saw an upper limit for the standard stem. Maybe I just missed it, but I would say 10 gallons a minute to, to 30 or something like that. And then if you want to use the heavy stem for 30 to 50 gallons per minute, I doubt you'll ever use this with a 50 gallon per minute setup, but just be aware that there is a heavy flow stem, but there's also a light flow stem that's good for six gallons per minute up to 10 gallons per minute. And so all you've got to do is just push this thing out and replace it. It's really, really super easy. But if it's having difficulty switching zones, it's because that this is not rotating properly down in there. So always check your stem, um, check the inside of your cam and make sure it's flushed out and nothing is happening in there. But also an elevation rise. It, you know, we talked about the mounting of this as this should be mounted or, or installed at the highest point of the system. Or if you have a zone that goes out and say goes up a hill for you know a, a good bit of elevation rise or goes into a greenhouse that has some elevated pipes for drip or whatever, if you've got water, the weight of water that's pushing down in these pipes and pushing back up into the system, it can cause a problem with this disc rotating down in there. So the fix of that is you just put a check valve on that zone, okay? and that'll solve the problem of that water pushing back up in here. So all zones running at once, that's a unique problem as well. And normally what's happening is that this disc isn't seating fully down on there and say water is, as the, the 
the system is running, the water is going through here and it's backing back up. So sometimes what happens is, is a zone valve or a, a zone pipe gets pinched off and it causes water to back up, the pressure backs back up into the valve and causes this disc to float up off of its seat, off of its lip there, and allows water to go through all the zones. So if all the zones are running at once, check that out and see if this is you know, able to seat down on there, if there's a, a pinched off pipe. Um, and let's see, also when you're, <clears throat> let's say that this is a four zone unit and you need to temporarily disable one of the zones, the fix is, you know, or, or the, the solution to that is, is to cap off the zone and change the cam. See, if we had a four zone system previously and we wanted to shut off one of the zones, say a, a flower bed is no longer being used and you wanted to cut that off, sometimes people will just put a cap on that, cut it, put a cap on it and not change the cam. Well, that causes this problem is that when it's trying to run on that zone, it's causing water to feed right back up. I mean, it pressurizes down to the cap and then it's pushing back up and can cause this. It won't happen every time, but it can cause this to push back up and float off of there. So for that reason, if you have to do away with the zone, you know, cut off zone number four, then get you a three zone cam. It's a two step process. If you remove one of the zones, you have to cap it, but you also have to change the cam for that reason. So there's some other things that are going on, but just read through the steps. And when you get out in the field, you'll start seeing a lot of times in your area, you're gonna have some of the same common problems. There's gonna be certain problems that are particular to pump situations, to, to pump combinations or pump situations and there's gonna be some things that you find that, that'll happen on city water. And sometimes city water's pressure and flow will fluctuate, but not like that of a pump. But I wanna show you something, as you're putting this thing back together, I'm gonna to set this back down on there and make sure that it's on its stem. And what I like to do is just put one single finger through here and then put that finger on the stem. And you've gotta kind of hold it straight up and down as you drop this on here. Then I spin it around to where I see the two holes and then just allow that to gracefully sit down on there, okay? And just make sure that it's lined up and then you can put everything else back together and it's pretty easy.